WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. Tupelo police are investigating after a man was found dead at an apartment last night. The victim in that shooting is 27-year-old Santonio Carruthers. Officers responded to the shooting at Nathaniel Place Apartments about 1130. They are interviewing a person of interest. So far, they have not made any arrests. The investigation into the shooting is still ongoing. The video has now gone viral. A campground employee in Octobaha County displaying a gun while telling a couple and their dog they had to leave the property. Our cash Matlock sat down with the Richardsons today. He joins us in the studio now with more on what happened. Cash? Well, for most people, Memorial Day weekend is a time of quiet reflection and relaxation with their families. However, that wasn't the case for this Starkville couple. You can feel the intense behind it. You know, and so I felt it. I felt the heat from it. I felt it in her eyes. I knew exactly what it was. Jessica Richardson says she and her husband were looking to spend the holiday weekend picnicking with their dog, possibly even renting a cabin. She says they Googled a nearby Campgrounds of America location and decided to drive there. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. She jumped out, and the gun was pointed at, the, at me, my husband, and our dog. It was just pointing at us. And one finger was on the trigger, the other finger was on the always 50 finger. On the lever. On the lever of the revolver. Richardson says that's when she pulled out her cell phone. The woman holding the gun identified herself as the property manager, but her choice of words were less than professional. She was just like, get, get, you don't belong here, you don't belong here, you don't belong here. Richardson says the confrontation was shocking. Time stopped, everything stopped. Yeah, I was and confused then, to what was going on. Right. I mean, we didn't like we were opposed to threat to anybody. We were out there walking our dog. Man, right. Nothing harmful about that. The fact that she used get get like we were a dog. You know, get you say get get to a stray dog that's on your porch. Mm -hmm. And that get get got to me more than you don't belong here. On the way out, they spoke to another campground employee outside of the office who turned out to be the woman's husband. So I get out, start talking to him, and he says, first thing he says, oh no, you don't need a reservation for the lake. And right. then she pulls up, flying, when well, she flies, pulling up. Hops out the car and then proceeded to yell at my wife. Get in the car. Get in the yeah, car. Yeah, get in the car. You need to get back in the car. And like mm -hmm. cussing her out, and she's not even saying anything. With signs at the front entrance and two different stories from employees, the Richardsons were confused, horrified, and disappointed. The Army National Guard sergeant recently returned home from a nine-month deployment in the Middle East. It's kind of crazy. You don't have a you go over there. Don't have a gun pointed at you. and Come back here, and the first thing happens, you have a gun pointed at you. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think about. Well, we reached out to the corporate KOA office. They released this statement to us, quote, Campgrounds of America does not condone the use of a firearm in any manner on our properties or those owned and operated by our franchises. The employee involved in the incident has been relieved of her duties at the Starkville KOA, end quote. All right. Cash in our studio with that story. One person was shot in Oklahoma. Police there were called to Adams Street about 1 a.m. A man had been shot in the left leg and taken to the hospital. He was treated and released. No arrest has been made in that case. Lowndes County investigators are looking for someone who may have tried to take a cut of a local barbershop's business early Friday morning. Someone broke into Don's 45 Barbershop in northern Lowndes County. Surveillance video shows a white BMW that may have been involved. If you recognize the car or have any information, call Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers. Northern District Public Service Commissioner Brandon Presley is once again setting his sights on dishonest telemarketers. This time, he's recruiting the targets of those callers to help out. Allie Martin tells us how you can get involved. We've all received the phone calls. Some promise a free prize, while others have a threatening message. Ignoring this will be an intentional second attempt to avoid initial appearance before a magistrate judge or a grand jury for a federal criminal offense. Public Service Commissioner Brandon Presley has called out companies who violate Mississippi's no-call law, but he wants to do more to rein in the dishonest robocallers and he's asking for the public to help. We're asking citizens that are interested uh, in going a couple of steps further and helping with our investigations uh, to become almost a reserve investigator for us. 
while Presley says it's good for people to report phone numbers of illegal robocalls, he believes an army of volunteers trained to ask specific questions and gather valuable information could make a big difference. We're going to be the first state in the country that really reaches out to citizens, carries them through training, explains them what to ask uh, to help us build a case to prosecute uh, these folks who, quite frankly, you know, just are sitting around with nothing better to do and they have their mind set on stealing and harassing Mississippians. The main requirements for joining this volunteer army, you have to have a phone and be at least 18 years old. All information collected will be relayed to Presley's office where investigators will take over and look into each case. And we just put the telemarketers on notice. If you're selling such things as uh, uh, home security systems, you may be showing up at a house where a public service commission investigator is there playing along as if we wanted to buy the home security system. Now, the person that shows up to sell it probably has not violated the law, they're just a contractor, but we're going to be able to trace down who caused that call to be made. Presley also points out that tougher laws protecting Mississippi consumers from telemarketers take effect July 1st. Allie Martin, WCBI News. If you're interested in helping, contact Presley's office. Time now to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. He joins us with a first look at our forecast. Joey, another very warm and summer-like day around here. A live view in Columbus right now shows a lot of sunshine, some of those friendly clouds. Temperatures are warm, as you know, as you've been out there. It is extremely warm in some spots. There's a live view in Tupelo. It feels like 95 in Columbus. It feels like 93 in Starkville and 93 in Tupelo. So pretty warm across the entire region, upper 80s to low 90s. That's the current temperature situation. As you venture on out this evening, soak up the sun, the rain, the storms back to the northwest. That's where they're going to be by late this evening down into the 70s. Your full forecast is coming up. A historic year is in the books for the Winona Montgomery Consolidated School District. It has been a challenge for students, administrators, and the communities. Today, our jury tally sits down with the superintendent to talk about this inaugural year. She joins us in the studio with more jury. As we all know, change is never easy. After obstacles and accomplishments, the first year for the Consolidated School District is now in the books. And the district's leaders say even with the turmoil, there has been great success. I started here in 2013, and uh, the first consolidation bill came out about Winona in 2013. And two years later, the next one came out that included Winona, Montgomery County, and Carroll County. And Carroll County was eventually dropped. So I just knew that I knew that it was my work. I knew that it was why I was here. Winona Montgomery Consolidated School District Superintendent Dr. Teresa Jackson took on her new role back in February of 2018. Although the district officially came into being July 1st, Jackson says the work started months earlier with the community advisory board. This is parents, community leaders, higher education representative, um, students, and uh, teachers. Some. And what's interesting is seven members had to be approved by the former Montgomery County School District and seven members had to be approved by the former Winona School District. So I have this 14 member team that meets with me monthly and gives me ideas about what we are doing right and gives me suggestions for what we could do better. Even with that involvement, there have been obstacles, even lawsuits, but people are starting to come together. Now all of that has kind of died down. We do still have the Department of Justice um, has been paying close attention to what we're doing and making suggestions. Um, and so we, we've been working with them as well. But we, I, we feel like we're getting close to the end of the, the litigation and the legal issues so that we can just have school. The seasoned educator says before the district became one, they were two small districts with their own financial challenges. Even putting the two districts together, it didn't alleviate a lot of those challenges, but it did give us some additional resources. We were able to hire nine instructional assistants. So we have a, an assistant teacher in every classroom, pre-K through second grade. Um, we were able to go back to a full-time librarian at the high school. The logistics of physically bringing the students together hasn't been easy either. Because we went from being a city school district to being a countywide. And so all of the challenges with how to get kids to school quickly 
and safely on those county roads, um, going in and making sure bus repairs were done, um, replacing batteries and tires and things like that. Additional teachers were brought in, including familiar faces from both districts. It was what was right for kids in um, all of Montgomery County because um, all of the students made new friends. All of the students uh, got, there was benefit from putting the schools together. There were more resources, more computers, more technology, um, more money to do things with, more people to support students. Jackson says with this year behind them, the focus is on the future. Jackson says she has an open door policy for anyone that has concerns about the schools. She also says the district is working on ways to improve bus routes for the upcoming school year. All right, Memorial Day weekend may be over, but summer fun is just heating up. We have what you need to know about a hot time in Tupelo coming up next. Welcome back, everyone. The Memorial Day weekend was a busy one on Mississippi highways. The Mississippi Highway Patrol says 148 crashes were investigated, including one fatal crash in Jackson County. MHP also handed out over 7,200 tickets and nearly 160 DUI arrests were made. 53 injuries were reported during the holiday weekend, which began Friday and ended Monday at midnight. If you're looking for something to do next week, Tupelo is putting final touches on this year's Elvis Festival. Activities start June 5th with a tribute artist showcase concert at the Elvis Presley birthplace. Friday night, there is uh, live music at Fair Park featuring another native son, Paul Thorne. There's a new event on the Thursday schedule. The Becoming Experience is geared toward the next generation of Elvis fans and tribute artists. Kids will get to learn from Dr. Bruce Leslie, who's an outstanding vocal coach, and he'll kind of teach them how to work with their voices. So it'll be a little bit of a workshop, and then if the kids want to participate later, they can uh, be in the competition. The Tupelo Elvis Festival starts June 5th. It runs through the 9th. You can get a complete list of activities on the TupeloElvisFestival.com website. Limited moisture around our region today. Right now, though, there's one little rogue shower, thunder shower falling apart out there in the Delta. No issues for us here tonight. The full forecast is next. weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Some friendly clouds out there today. You can see that with our Alpha Insurance time lapse downtown Tupelo. Some of those clouds moving from south to north. Another warm afternoon temperatures in the 90s. The heat index in the mid to upper 90s around here. Rain chances low today. They will stay relatively low going forward. Warm air continues too. Regional baseball weather. Starkville, Oxford. It's looking pretty good Friday, Saturday, probably Sunday too. Look at this, a southern sizzler today. The Century Club, Macon, Georgia, Tallahassee, Florida, Savannah, Gainesville, Charleston, 100, 101, hot and humid across the deep south here on our Tuesday. So we're still around 90 here, still in the mid-90s over there in Macon at 96. Not as hot back in Little Rock at 84. So the farther southeast you travel in the region, much warmer, much cooler back to the northwest. Denver, Colorado. Not loving life right now. 49 stuck in winter out there behind this system. Now, we have this big area of high pressure. It's basically been hanging out here for over a week down here in the deep south. We've had wave after wave of storms go around it. We call this the ring of fire effect. So all the big-time storms are up 
well to our north, and that's where they are now. That's where they will be tonight and tomorrow. Notice the severe weather threat on Wednesday, stretching all the way from New York back to Chicago, down towards Dallas. But for us, basically high and dry. Rain chances, we're going to keep those at about 20%. Maybe an opportunity Thursday with a weak cold front coming on in, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, too. Uh, but model consensus here for the next week, generally a quarter of an inch or less. So my advice to you, if you have some plants that need to be watered, Keep on watering them and assume no rain until proven otherwise at this point. Mainly clear, quiet, and humid tonight. Lows around 70. And for Wednesday, we start out in the low 70s by noon, pushing 90, 93, our forecast high average. Some of you may fall short of that tomorrow, about 90 or so in Pontotoc, uh, 91, 92 for you in Tupelo, 93, 94 here in the Golden Triangle area, maybe only 92 in Starkville, and again, low 90s here in the west Alabama. Winds from the south and southwest at about 5 to 15. So future cast, pretty quiet here for tonight and also for you Wednesday. As we get into Wednesday night and Thursday, especially Thursday, there will be a front that will come on in, but just a 20% chance for a little bit of rain there. Uh, there's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not too bad here for the weekend, but we may see a little bit more rain around the region perhaps by early next week. The Bulldogs and Rebels know who they will meet first on the road to Omaha. Find out about Friday's opponents next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Evel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Now that the NCAA tournament has arrived, the strategy game comes into play. For Mississippi State, the decision will be to whether to begin the tournament with your ace, Ethan Small Friday afternoon against Southern or save Small for Saturday's matchup with either Miami or Central Michigan and throw another arm to open the tournament. Head coach Chris Lamona says while no one wants to lose, the extra days after Hoover to give the Bulldogs some extra rest means anyone can go on Friday. Everybody's available. So yeah, that's, that's the one benefit of coming home a little early from the tournament is that our Wolfen's rested, our starters are rested, and we're ready to go. Hoover's is just a toll on your body. It's just a toll on sleep, all that kind of thing. So um, we didn't want to lose. You know, we didn't want to do that. But the fact of getting back and being able to rest, I think we all feel really refreshed, and we're excited to get back out there today. We've, we've had enough time off now that we're, we're ready to go and get out there and get ready. Knowing the opponent for Friday for Mississippi State, the SWAC Conference Tournament champion Southern Jaguars. 32-22 and 22 record on the season, with Southern going 19-11 and 11 versus common opponents shared with the Bulldogs, including a midweek win over LSU. It's a tale of two sides of the ball for the Jags. They can really rip it. Seventh best team batting average in the country, hitting 313 as a team, but the pitching staff Struggles, a 5.75 team ERA, that's 231st in the country. The Bulldogs and Jaguars face off at noon at Duty Noble Field on Friday. Two weeks ago, the Rebels were prepared to pack their bags for the postseason, a projected three seed heading into the SEC tournament. Four wins later and a tournament championship appearance was enough to bolster Ole Miss's resume to host a regional, along with a top 10 strength of schedule. The turnaround from the end of the regular season to its tournament performance is being attributed to letting loose, and head coach Mike Bianco hopes it'll carry over into postseason play. We learned, uh, you know, kind of found ourselves, and uh, and I think one of the one of the key you know, components of that was just playing the game, you know, getting back to doing that. We did that early in the season, uh, but when we had some adversity at the end of the year, you know, we made it really tough on ourselves. But again, you know, proud of the way we played, and hopefully we'll continue to play like that. Just take a little bit of pressure off ourselves. You know, we have a really talented team, and just have confidence in ourselves and not try to press too much, um, because we do have a lot of a lot of good arms, a lot of good a lot of good hitters. Um, you know, just go out there and be confident in what we have. The Rebels will take on Jacksonville State Friday night for its regional opener. The OVC Conference Tournament champs, they went 37-21 and 21 on the season. 2-4 and four versus the SEC this year with midweek wins against tournament teams Georgia and Auburn. Middle of the pack statistically, 271 team batting average, 123rd nationally, and they have a 4.3 team ERA, 85th in the country, 7 p.m. first pitch on Friday at Swayze Field. ICC Baseball's Jackson Lancaster officially becomes a part of SEC Baseball. A standout center fielder signing to join the Missouri Tigers. 
The Corinth native was sensational for ICC in 2019, leading the Indians in batting average, hits, triples, RBIs, just to name a few. And the Southpaw also saw some time on the mound, picking up three saves and striking out 47 in 26 and two-thirds innings of work. He's the first ICC Indian to sign with Missouri. That's it for sports. Let's look at weather is now. Pretty warm, pretty dry for the next seven days. Slightly cooler, if you can call it that, Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday. At least the overnight <laughs> lows will get back down to the mid 60s. So it will be cooler at night. That's a little plus. Uh, maybe a little bit of rain around the region Thursday, also Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. But at this point, we're thinking things should be pretty good for the uh, regionals in Starkville and Oxford this weekend. Great. Big baseball weekend. It's supposed yeah. to be pot when there's baseball, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just find a way to stay cool out That's there. That's exactly right. All right. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.